Okay, um, I think we're going to get started. So, um, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on picking freshman classes. My name is Emily. And my name is Ruta. And um, we're currently juniors at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, so if you were anything like me, you'd probably be like confused about like picking freshman classes or like um, confused about what classes you need to graduate or um, what classes you need to do um, for your freshman year. But um, hopefully we're gonna try to alle alleviate some of those like anxieties um, or answer some of those questions through this webinar. Um, so yeah. And if you have any immediate questions, um, feel free to ask in the chat and someone um, will monitor the questions there. But otherwise, we'll also have question, uh, time for questions at the end as well. And also make sure to stick around because we're going to be raffling off a free pit, free pit t-shirt at the end. Okay, awesome. So to get started, we wanted to do a quick word cloud poll to see how you guys are feeling about picking your classes right now. So if you wanna to go to this link, or you can text this number. Um, and the question is, how are you feeling about college classes right now? So about like the difficulty of the workload, confused. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, yeah. Um, that sounds like what you'd expect, I guess, um, especially uh, going through this time and also um, just going into college in general. Um, I know I was really anxious um, going into college as well. But um, hopefully this webinar is able to alleviate some of those um, worries, like I mentioned before. Um, yeah, so we're first gonna go over um, the like anatomy of college classes. And then we're gonna talk about like planning your classes. And then at the very end, we're gonna go through a quick tutorial on PeopleSoft and navigating the Student Center. Um, and also like add some couple of helpful links as, um, or as part of this slide. So we're gonna be sending out the slide later as well. Um, the first topic uh, is the anatomy of a college class. And um, the reason why we wanted to start off with this topic is because there's some things that are different um, compared to high school. And um, I think it's important to point out, especially when you're picking your classes. Um, so here's an example freshman uh, schedule that's actually made by Rutha when she was a freshman. Um, and um, it's just to get give you an idea of what like college courses could be like. Um, of course, your schedule wouldn't like look exactly like hers, but um, one thing I do want to point out is that college courses like they can range from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. and um, that's probably something you might not be used to. Um, and also for the classes, they're structured into a Monday, um, Wednesday, Friday structure or Tuesday, Thursday structure usually. And typically they range from 50 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, although some can be a little bit longer depending on um, what kind of class you have. Um, but one thing I do wanna point out are recitations um, and they, those are in the green uh, boxes highlighted on her schedule. Um, so recitations are 50 minute supplementary classroom time um, and they meet once per week. Um, they're usually when larger lectures are broken up into smaller discussion sections and you guys meet um, like whatever day of the week. Um, and the reason why, or, oh, and they're usually used by professors to like answer questions about the co uh, course material or to um, put concepts into practice. So um, you might be going through like practice problems or um, it's just a time for professors to expand upon lecture material. Um, and the reason why I mentioned like recitations is because they're not necessarily, although they're part of a class, they're not, um, limited to the Monday, Wednesday, Friday structure, or the Tuesday, Thursday structure. They can be um, any day of the week, any time as well. And because of that, when you're picking a class with a certain recitation on a certain day or time, um, it would also affect where you would put um, your other classes because it's sort of like the oddball. So it's just one thing to look out for when you're planning classes. Okay, cool. So um, another resource to keep in mind for especially the beginning of the year is the syllabus. So just about all your professors are going to prepare this for you at the beginning of the year. And it has a lot of awesome information like 
your professor and TA's contact information, office hours, and also your class schedule for the semester, which includes the exams, which is what I want to point out to you guys for this topic. So when you get your syllabus, it's a really good idea to compare uh, all the exams for your classes and kind of map out how they're spread out over the semester. So here you can see like the exams with the little red arrows. Um, so if you find yourself maybe with a bunch of exams in one day for all different courses, or if you have a lot of finals that overlap, you might want to consider taking one of those classes in a different semester to set yourself up for a little more success this first semester, just depending how you're feeling about it. Um, this is important, I think, because in college, which is different from high school, I think your exams can be a lot bigger part of your grade than in high school. So um, it's important to keep those in mind. And even if you decide to go ahead with those classes, you can prepare earlier for that busy day or week, which is good to know ahead of time. So now we're going to move on to some of the background research and information that's going to help you decide on exactly what classes you want to pick for your first fall semester at Pitt. Um, and the way I usually start thinking about this is how many classes do you want to take? So to be a full-time student at Pitt, you have to take 12 to 18 credits of classes. Um, and as a gauge, like most classes are usually three credits. Some of the labs or like less frequent classes might be one or two credits. Some of the more frequent classes like languages uh, might be four to five credits, but they're all in kind of in that range. And then if you're wondering about how much time that would take up or like how to know how many credits to take, um, usually in general, each credit hour of class time corresponds to one hour of time like in class with lectures or recitations and then two hours outside of work, like doing assignments or studying for tests or things like that every week. So for example, if you took 15 credits of classes, then that would be 45 hours per week of like class time and studying and um, everything that you should allot for school approximately. So just keep in mind that that's kind of a ballpark, like especially the two hours outside of your class can really like vary depending on the class and how much you have to do for it. Um, but I just find it helpful to think about that when you're thinking about how many credits to take, especially once you're deciding about what extracurriculars you want to get involved in and of course leaving yourself with a good amount of free time. Um, as an example for you guys, my freshman year, I took 15 credits the first semester, and for me, that was a good amount to feel challenged, but not too overwhelmed, but that can totally vary. Some people take more, some people take less, and I just want to shoot out a reminder that you'll also be adjusting a lot more of your life outside of your classes this first semester, and for most people, you know, it's their first time living independently away from home, and so I just want to remind you guys, if you can take a little fewer um, credits your first semester, if possible, I think that'll really help you guys with that transition then you can always take more or less in the next semesters. So before we move on to a little more specifics about choosing classes, would you guys be able to type in the chat what school you're enrolled in, like either the arts and sciences or business, nursing, engineering, whichever? And as you're typing that, the reason I was asking about it is because Emily and I were most familiar with the arts and sciences requirements and that's kind of what we used to go over like the education, like the graduation requirements. Um, but if you're not in the arts and sciences, a lot of the same tips are still gonna apply. And also I wanted to give a shout out to the Panther Connect webinars, which are from Pitt itself. Um, so we'll have the links for those at the end and those will have more of the specifics of class enrollment and stuff for each school. Like I think I saw some people in the business school and, and things like that. So um, definitely take a, take a look at those if you want some more specifics. I think they're in July or yeah, July. Yeah, so it seems like a lot of people um, are in Dietrich, and I see a couple of business school. Mm -hmm. I think it's about information science. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so in any case, like regardless of what school you're actually in, um, one good tip for planning for your classes is to think about your general education requirements. So um, Pitt has actually several different categories for, of requirements for you to complete. Um, classes in, in like a variety of subjects, and this is true for all schools at Pitt. Um, and because like it, like the general education requirements depends on which school you go to, um, you can we won't be able to go over like which ones which classes like you should take or which um, gen eds are for like one specific school. So um, if you want, you can look up your school's general education requirements on their respective websites, and they have great re resources um, that go over that. And like Ruta mentioned, there's also a Panther Connect webinar. Uh, um, for each specific school, which, like she mentioned um, earlier, will also be linked at the end. Um, or you can also go through it with your advisor um, it, when you go over your advising report, which um, 
she will, they will explain when you have your advising meeting. Um, but some of these gen eds actually might be knocked out by your major um, or transfer credits if you took AP or college courses in high school, um, but the rest you would have to take like during your um, time here at Pitt. Um, but once you know your major, I would recommend sprinkling one to two of these general education requirements every semester just to keep your classes varied and also just stay on track um, with your requirements. Um, and if you're unsure or completely undecided about your major, it's a great idea to start your semester with um, some classes in these like requirement uh, categories, um, just so you can like explore different subject areas and at the same time also be contributing to your graduation requirements. Um, I actually heard a lot of students who found their major through gen ed. So it's something you should definitely consider doing um, when picking out your classes. Yep. And on the other hand, if you already have an idea of what major or track or at least field you want to pursue, uh, it's definitely helpful to spend some time researching into that. So what you can do is just search blank major pit. So here for an example, I searched up neuroscience major pit, and that will lead you to the information page for that department and major, and then all the class requirements to graduate should be super clear right there. So the main department website, which is here kind of in blue at the bottom, will have all of your class requirements to graduate and usually like some description of the classes so you can kind of compare what you want to take. Um, and then another very helpful resource that a lot of departments have are sample schedules. Um, those are great for laying out the classes you need to take and the order that they would recommend you taking them in. So here on the right, you can see an example layout for the neuroscience major of how you might want to space out the required classes. Um, and then that just makes it easier for you to know that you're like on track for the major you want to do. And then you can fill the rest of your semesters in with the general education requirements or just any other classes that you want to take. Um, also, if you're deciding between a few majors, doing some research like this on these web pages can help you kind of compare them, especially if there's some like overlapping classes and they're like similar majors, then that would be a great idea to start with those classes so you can have um, time to decide between them. And in general, this and the, the gen eds that Emily just went over are kind of the main ways that we've found to plan and pick your classes. You know, technically there is like an official course catalog that you guys could look at if you want, but there's just so many classes that it's not super worth your time to like really go through that. And I would just recommend looking at your general education requirements and your major requirements um, and kind of working on constructing your schedule that way. And we'll go into a little more specifics of how to search for your classes um, in PeopleSoft a little later tonight. Um, so in the future, um, this is just something that I wanted to point out. You don't have to worry about this like necessarily right now, but um, if you're a planner like me, it you you can probably um, create a whole four year plan of classes that you would need to take um, to graduate. And this includes like your major requirements, your gen ed requirements, and um, all the necessary credits you need to graduate as well. But like I mentioned before, um, don't, if you, if you feel overwhelmed by this, like don't worry about it right now, because you can definitely think about it like later um, when you, like even during your college career, um, you can start like at that point. Um, but yeah. All right. So um, if no one has any questions, we're, we're just going to move on to the next section, um, which is registering for classes using PeopleSoft Student Center. Oh, oh we just have a question. Um, so Sona asked, just to confirm, how many credits can you take this semester? Um, so a school semester, um, like Ruth mentioned, is between 12 to 18 credits. Um, and so minimum 12 to be a full-time student, max 18 credits. Otherwise, if you take more than 18 credits, I and mean, you would have to pay for all the, the extra credits, which is a little bit expensive in my opinion, but um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Generally, we recommend like probably in the middle, maybe even towards like the 12 credits um, end of things, just because like, yeah, just because it's easier to um, manage, especially when you're coming in as a freshman. And yeah, we'll just answer one more question. Um, so Mohammed asks, do you guys recommend taking academic communities or academic foundations? Um, I personally did not have experience in those um, in the academic communities or foundations. Um, I know some people took it and it's helpful, um, especially when you're transitioning into college as a freshman, but it's not a required um, class. And it's usually one credit um, for at least for the ac academic foundations. So um, it's really up to you if you want to like explore more about Pitt or about college life um, or like see any like like connect with other people who are also curious about 
um, a certain subject as well. So um, it's really up to you, but I find that not that many people end up doing that um, in my, from my experience. I actually did, I took academic foundations and I liked it. I mean, it wasn't like, if I didn't take it, it would have been horrible, but I thought it was a good like introduction to Pittsburgh. You get to do like a little field trip or something around and um, meet some people your first semester. And the academic communities, I think, can also be a good option if you know like some areas you want to get um, that you already want to take the classes in because it's nice to see the same people over and over again like when it's such a big campus you know you can make it out a little smaller by taking like by knowing that you're going to see the same people over and over but yeah so for the sake of time um, we're just actually going to move on with the webinar but um, if you have any questions um, there there will be people monitoring the questions and answering them as well um, and then if you want us to explain it or like answer the question specifically, there's also the Q&A at the end. Um, but yeah, we'll just go and move on. Um, so like I mentioned before, we're gonna talk about registering for classes now. Um, and we're gonna give a quick, or I'm gonna give a quick um, tutorial on PeopleSoft. So once you've figured out what classes you wanna take, um, you're ready to go on to the next stage, which is registering for them. Um, and you should have already gotten like a video from Pitt like about how to pick classes. Um, but if you were like me freshman year, I was like, you might be confused um, or still have many questions about how the system works. Um, so we're just gonna go through it um, very quickly um, and hopefully it should explain some things um, a little bit more clearly that Pitt um, in the video wasn't able to. So um, the first thing you wanna do is um, obviously go on to my.pit.edu and fill out your login information. Don't forget to do dual, my, uh, dual mobile. And um, in the search bar, type in access the student center, which would lead you to the, these search results. And in the red boxes, you can choose either one. Um, if you press on it, it should lead you to um, the student center, which is where you will be picking your classes. Um, so this is the main page of the student center. And um, to get to adding classes, you would first go to services or main page or was it main menu services and then enrollment and then enrollment at classes which if you didn't know that before like it would be confusing to like try to find that but um it, it, if we're going too fast like we're also like like i mentioned before like sending out these slides so you can look at it um a little bit later so after um you pick like enrollment at classes you should land on the first um, page which is at the top and on this page, you want to fill out um, or press the circle with fall term 2020 to 2021 and press continue because you're going to pick classes for that specific term for the fall semester. And just by the way, we are um, a semester based school and not a quarter based school. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, and then once you press continue, you would um, end up on the second page, which is number two. And this is the um, essentially it's the shopping cart. Um, page and so you can see like all the classes that you picked um, that you want to enroll in. Um, you're not able to enroll in your classes just yet because you have to first meet with your advisor. Um, so um, that's something that like you can't do right now, but you can pick classes, which is um, I guess the whole point of this uh, tutorial. So um, to enroll, you can just press search on the left side and you should end up with this page, which is the search bar. Um, and for the search bar, there are, there's one thing that you have to do um, every single time, which is fill out the campus um, box. And if, uh, make sure you fill out the campus that says Pittsburgh campus, because if you fill out any other campus um, that's under the University of Pittsburgh, like for example, um, like the Greensburg campus, then you'll be picking classes for that campus and not for um, the Pittsburgh campus. So you wanna pick the Pittsburgh um, main campus and then um, there's three different ways to search for a class and I'll go through each one um, right now. So the first way is if you know what class specifically you need to take and you know what the subject and code for it is, you can go ahead and fill that out in the blue box um, shown on the, like slightly to the right. Um, so the subject would be something like, um, for example, I'm in biological, I'm a bio major, so I would pick a class like in biological sciences and so the subject for that is B-I-O-S-B. And like, again, you would have to do your research and like figure out what exactly the codes and subjects are. Um, and say if I'm like trying to search specifically for foundations of biology one, um, I know the code for that, which is 0150. 
And so um, once I fill out that information, I can press search and it should pop up um, the specific class that I'm looking for. So that's option number one. Number two would be to um, just use the subject um, box instead of the code. And the reason why you would do that is because if you know that you need to take a certain class within a certain subject, um, but you don't know specifically what class you want to take, you can just type fill in the subject and press search and it should um, come up with a whole list of classes that fall under that subject. Um, and so that's option number two. And then the third option is if you're trying to fulfill a general education requirement, um, but you don't know exactly how to go about like searching for it, you can use the green box, um, which is shown on the screen. And um, what you would do for that is in course, course attributes, which is the top box, um, you would fill out your school's gen ed requirements. So it just says like Dietrich, like general, uh, general education requirements or like um, school of business, like general education requirements. So you would specify, specify which school you're in. And then at the bottom where it says course attributes value, um, that's where you actually pick the specific general education requirement you want to fulfill. So for example, um, in Dietrich, if I want to fulfill the language requirement, um, once I fill out the Dietrich school, I can look underneath and see um, language and then fill that out. And all the courses that come up when I hit search should s satisfy that general education requirement. So it's a really useful tool. Um, and then once you hit search, this is what um, should pop up. It should be a list of classes like this. And it looks really confusing at first, um, but I'll go through right now um, how to like kind of look for the specific class that you would want. So on the left um, at the top, you'll notice that um, this column is for the type of class. And I point that out because um, it lists like both lectures and recitations, which I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the webinar. Um, but the lectures are the ones that you want to pay attention to. Um, and you'll know it's a lecture if it says LEC as like highlighted in the red boxes. Um, so you want to make sure you're looking for a lecture and not a recitation um, when you're picking classes. And then other things to consider are like the schedule, which is um, in the second or I guess the third column, um, location of the class, and then um, what probably the most important factor would be instructor, which Ruta will go over now on um, how to figure out which instructor you should take. Yep, so um, as only said, the professor that you pick can actually, it's kind of unfortunate, but even for the same class, having a different professor can really change how the class goes for you. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how to, well, how I like to go about picking the professors each semester. So the first uh, way that I love to use is using Rate My Professors. You guys might have heard of this before, but if not, it's basically just a website where you can search up professors at your school. So here I have um, University of Pittsburgh pulled up and you can see reviews by other students who have had the same professor that you're looking to possibly take and you can kind of see the reviews and the ratings for each professor um, one thing to note here though is to just make sure you're reading the reviews for the class you want to sign up for usually professors are going to teach a few different classes each semester so if you're reading reviews for a different class like a harder class or something it might not actually apply to the class you're taking so just watch out for that and then also just remember that not all the reviews are completely accurate you know some things are like subjective but if you see trends like really easy class or like the professor was never available or don't buy the textbook for this class like she just uses the slides things like that you definitely want to take into account um, but overall this is a really great resource and it's helped me a lot to like pick the professors and it's usually pretty accurate um, and then another way I just wanted to mention is that you can always talk to older students who have taken the same classes as you this can sometimes be a little harder if you're taking smaller classes where there's a lot of different professors, but for the larger introductory classes um, where the same professors teach it over and over, other students who are you know, in your major or just have taken those freshman classes can really be a great resource in sharing their experience. And just as a small plug, if you're in our mentorship program or if you're interested in that, you can definitely ask your mentor about their professors that they've taken. Um, and then even further, if you're interested in the majors that Emily and I are in or the tracks you can ask us about it and we'll have our contact information at the end for that um, and then a couple other things I wanted to mention to consider while you're making your schedule um, outside of like the actual classes is kind of how you organize them so first for the timing you know think about if you're a morning person or a night person because like we mentioned earlier the classes in college are a lot more flexible it can be you know from the very morning to like 10 at night so you get a lot more flexibility but that also comes with a little more decisions um, and for me freshman year i knew i wasn't a morning person i still am not so my earliest classes were like 
9.30 or usually noon, and that really worked great for me. But then I also took an evening class that semester that was at 6 p.m. to like 8 p.m. And I realized I didn't really like that. I just wanted to finish my classes in the afternoon and then be free to have like dinner with people or do homework or have club meetings or that kind of thing. So um, just want you guys to keep in mind that there's some things you know about yourself that you want to use to make your ideal schedule. And some things are like more trial and error for this first semester. Um, and that's totally fine. This is definitely the time to explore what works best for you. But I just want to point those out as some things to think about. Also with timing, think about how much time you leave yourself between classes. You know, some people like to have their classes really back to back with less breaks. And that can be helpful if you want to like chunk out your time and just have your classes at this time and then be free for the rest of the day. Um, but just be cautious that you don't have too many in a row or by the end you might be a little burnt out. Um, and then on the other hand, some people like longer breaks. They just want like one class at a time and then a long break before the next one. And that works too, just about figuring out what works for you. Um, another thing is just be aware of like your meal times, take care of yourself, try to leave yourself a break to grab some food during the day. Sometimes you can eat in class, but it's always nice to be able to like take a walk and go get some food. Um, you know, I've heard some people who had classes from like 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. with no breaks and they really just suffered those days. So definitely would not recommend that, you know, leave yourself breaks during the day. Um, and then also for the location of your classes, just uh, as you're registering for them, take a look at a map of the campus, see the buildings they're in, and maybe try to like map out how your schedule fits as you're like walking around campus. Usually the shortest time you'll have between classes that are right next to each other are like 10 or 15 minutes. And that's totally fine if the class is in the same building or you know nearby, but if it's all the way across campus, you probably don't wanna be making like that jog across campus every day. And then when it comes to winter with the rain and snow, like definitely not. So um, I would just caution you to look at like where your classes are and kind of map that out as you're thinking about it. All right, so the last thing um, we wanted to point out is the schedule maker or the schedule planner that PeopleSoft um, has. And this is a really useful tool to see if like the classes um, you're taking will conflict with each other. Um, and it's also nice to compare like different potential schedules for the semester. Um, so the way you find that is to go on back to the shopping cart screen and on the left side before below the search bar, um, it's the schedule planner button and you wanna press that and this is a, quick video, um, like a three minute video of like me kind of like showing like how to use it. Um, there's no audio or anything. It's just like, a, like I guess a visual demonstration. Um, but essentially like you can see at the, in my shopping cart, like I can see like what um, at the bottom, like ignoring the middle part, but at the bottom you can see like in my shopping cart, I have one class picked out. And when I generate a schedule, I can see like the um, class on a schedule, like like in a calendar view kind of thing, um, thing. And if you press on it, there's more information as well. Um, and then you can narrow down your search as well. Like you can search for classes through this planner um, and you can like, like pick which school you're in, um, what class, like what um, specific class you're looking for um, or what, what requirement you're looking to fulfill, like all those kinds of things. And that's really useful, um, especially um, because like you can, it's like, it's just another way where you can search for classes. Um, so as you can see, like I'm selecting like certain criteria that I want to fulfill and um, I picked a class based off of that, but you can also pick a class um, at the last tab. Um, like it, you can also pick by instructor. So if you've heard like of a really good instructor, for example, I highly recommend, <laughs> quick plug, um, I, I'm a TA for Dr. Erica McGreevy, but I highly recommend her because she's a really great Foundations Bio 1 um, professor if you're taking that class um, but yeah you can search for her and you can see what classes she takes or she teaches and then you can press on that class and you can find your class that way um, so once you've selected the classes that way um, you can go ahead and like go back to like the schedule planner main page and generate schedule and as you can see when um, I hit generate schedule and I look at the schedule um, that those classes should be added on and so I can see like what they look like um, in relation to each other and how much space and time um, is in between each classes. Um, and it's re just really useful to see like what your schedule would look like. Another feature that I really like is that you can actually compare them side by side. So right now you can see like um, there's three different types of schedules and the, they only vary because of the, like I mentioned before, like different recitations. Um, but that's just really nice to see like, oh, like do I like the recitation a little bit earlier or like a li little bit later during the day? Um, 
And then the last thing I wanted to mention was you can also add in breaks. So like Rita mentioned, um, you want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. So um, you can actually add in like scheduled breaks. For example, I put in lunch break. And um, as you can see in this, uh, the schedule maker, um, there should be like a purple line across through, although it's not like completely full screen, but you can see like there's a little purple line across um, going through and that's your lunch break. So it's really useful for um, just like planning classes around and making sure that you have that time to um, just relax or like eat or just have time for yourself and not just like going back and back um, with classes. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening to this whole thing. I hope you guys got a little something out of it at least and hopefully you're feeling a little less anxious and overwhelmed and maybe a little more informed about this whole process. And I just want to end by reminding you guys that it's totally okay not to have the perfect schedule or to be a little confused your first time going through this. Um, there's a lot of resources for you and you're going to most likely maybe change your schedule a little bit after meeting with your advisor or even during the first weeks of school. Um, and even throughout the semester, if something doesn't work for you, there's a lot of options to keep changing things. So uh, don't feel too overwhelmed. This is going to be okay. You know, I believe in you guys. And also here at the bottom, we have our email addresses. So feel free to shoot us an email if you have any questions um, or we can definitely help you guys with those if they come up later. And we'll also send you guys these slides with some additional like walkthrough diagrams for the registration process and some more resources and websites, kind of looks like this, but um, for you guys to look at later, that might be helpful um, and do some announcements. So before we finish off with the raffle for a t-shirt, does anyone have any more questions i haven't been looking in the chat but oh logan has a question yeah no problem guys i'm i hope that this was helpful for you guys and um yeah we sent out the slides in the chat so if you want to take a look at that later after this webinar you can definitely do that um so Jaden asked the question um are there any mistakes that you personally you guys personally made that you can share um, I'm, I'm assuming that refers to like scheduling mistakes. Um, for me personally, I definitely, I feel like I made a couple of mistakes um, because when I was going through my scheduling, I didn't realize that there are certain classes that you could take um, to fulfill like certain general education requirements. And so um, one thing I wish I had done earlier was to like look at all the gen ed requirements and pick out like classes beforehand um, that would fulfill that because um, like, it's just better to plan beforehand to see like, oh, like this is something I can do um, so that I don't have to like take another class uh, uh, later on in my school, uh, in my school year. But like, again, it's all like trial error and there's, you're definitely bound to make some mistakes. Like you can't, um, like you don't have to worry about like making a perfect schedule. So um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything to add on, Rita? Um, yeah, nothing serious. I mean, I think that only thing I hated most about my freshman year schedule is what I already shared, like having <laughs> class at night, especially because I lived on upper campus. You guys know like the upper and lower campus and I had to like go up and come back down. So just like looking at where things are and like I didn't really think that much about my schedule, I think, before I made it. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think um, Ed already answered or is answering Jaden's question. So we'll just go on to um, Logan's question. So his is, do you have to select recitations or do they pop up immediately? So that's actually a really good question because um, my mentee asked me that question too. Um, recitations are actually part of the course. So um, you don't have to do like anything about like searching for a specific recitation. Um, if your class already like includes a course, like it's already, it's supposed to be part of the course, um, it would be there on PeopleSoft. So when you go to search for your course and you press on um, the specific lecture that you want to take with the specific lecture. Um, they, like, once you press, like, continue or, like, proceed or whatever, they should give you an option to pick which time of, or day for your recitation. And it's something that you don't have to, like, do anything, like, do any extra work for. You just, it's already part of the class. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's just, like, it's part of the package. It, um, and, it, yeah, so, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully I answered your question. Um. Can I take a moment and answer a question up a bit further in the chat? Because it's easier to say words than type words. Yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Redeclaring your major. So most schools let you declare your major after around year two is what I've seen. Um, definitely don't like stress like I need to register right now before I even get into Dietrich. 
um, or into Pitt. Uh, that's something you can talk with your advisor and they'd help you with like what program specifics. But most of them are gonna be like, after year two, you're gonna wanna um, declare what your major is, transfer into a school if you need to transfer into a school and take it from there. Hopefully yeah. that answers the question. Thank you, Josh. Um, okay, I guess we'll do maybe one or two more questions. Um, I see one from John and his is, who do you, who would you recommend for um, foundations of bio one, Dr. Gardner or Dr. McGreevy? And who would you recommend for chem one? Um, okay, so this is completely subjective, but um, for foundations of bio one, I took Dr. Erica McGreevy and um, I personally really enjoyed her style of teaching because colleges, um, one thing you'll find different between college and high school is that professors don't baby you. <laughs> um, they don't like hold your hand through the process um, and you'll have to like learn um, how to survive college basically on your own. But um, not to say that there aren't professors who like are really great resources, but I find like a lot of professors like they just teach a course and they hold office hours. And other than that, like they don't really set up um, specifically a study schedule or like a way for you to learn most effectively. Um, I don't know much about Dr. Gardner, but for Dr. McGreevy, she um, is really useful or she was really helpful because um, during recitations she would have us like do like these take home like um, like take home quizzes almost and you would fill it on your own and then you go back um, into your groups and then you discuss it and then you fill it out and then you turn it in. And so like the reason why she does that is because like one, you're trying to learn the content on your uh, self and then two, you can discuss it with a group. And essentially everything that she does is so that you can um, transition into college like with the right study techniques and right study skills. And that's why I personally really enjoy uh, enjoyed her class and found it really helpful and easy to go through. That was just my personal experience and that's also why I like teaching for her. Um, so I can't really, Say anything about um, between those two. I can only talk about Dr. McGreevy. Um, and then for Chem 1, um, there's a variety of Chem 1 professors. Um, I can't, I don't know all of them, but I would say like for Chem 1, generally it's, you would get like the same experience with all the professors. I don't know if it was the same for you. Um, actually, Ruth took honors Chem 1, so it's probably different. Yeah, but, sorry, I don't know the Chem teachers. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. If you have any more um, specific questions, like about like more specific questions like that, like you can just contact us and hopefully I can have a more um, detailed response about that. Um, yeah, no problem. I think Ed answered um, Nayun's question. And yeah. All right. Like, um, so yeah, I guess Roger mentioned this already, but um, if anyone's like pre-med um, or considering pre-med, we'll actually have a webinar on that um, next week, I believe on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, with the same link. So um, yeah, you can um, you can message us if you are interested in that webinar and we'll send you more info information about that. 